Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing Babylon JS tutorial series. Now, today we're going to start getting into coding. Uh, so, very specifically, we're going to look at setting up Babylon JS so it runs in your browser, and we're going to get a cube up and drawn on screen. And that's about it. I'm going to try and keep these tutorials five to ten minutes in length, keep them bite sized if I can help it. Uh, so, without further ado, let's jump in. Now, one thing to remember is for every one of these tutorials, there is a text analog available on GameFromScratch.com. I will give this link down below. It contains all of the code we are going through today. So, if you get a little bit behind on some of the code I'm doing, don't worry, you can get it from the website there. So I will link that in the comments down below. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. First things first, we need to jump into our editor of choice. Since this is HTML5, all runs in the browser, pick whatever you want. I'll use uh, trusty Visual Studio Code in this particular case. Uh, if you are a um, Patreon backer, there is a uh, WebStorm project with all of the code for the Babylon series available in the Patreon Dropbox site. Uh, so you can also get the project there and if you're using WebStorm, which is another option There is a project file set up with all of these particular projects already configured All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I will create a new file called index.html And all we're doing right now is basically creating the host version of our code so um, Doc type Not t technically needed, but let's be accurate with our coding convention here so HTML tag, uh, meta char set equal UTF-8. Again, optional, but I'm being thorough. Title, Babylon.js, demo, close that off. All right, and next thing, we shall close our, oops, our head that I forgot to open. My bad. All right. So that is our head. Our head will become more important in a second. Uh, next up, what we need to do outside of the head is create a body. Close said body, like so. And close our HTML. All right, so there's nothing impressive going on here at all. But the key thing and the most important line you're going to have is you need to have a canvas container in which to run our actual code. So what we're going to do is just go up here to where body is and we will add a canvas tag. ID equals canvas. That ID is important. You have to remember it and close off our canvas like so. So now we have a container to go ahead and run Babylon JS in. Uh, now let's actually make it so this container takes up 100% of our um, available space, so we'll add a style up here. We could have done this in line, but. And said style is for our hashtag canvas and width colon 100%, height colon 100%, and good. All right, so now we have a canvas running inside our, our body tag, and all I'm gonna do now is make sure that it's actually working. Uh, so uh, express, I'll just open this up in the browser. All right, it wants to be a directory. All right, we'll close this down. And I'll just open this folder instead. All right, so there is our code. This is taking up too much room, so go away. Now, control shift P, express. All right, so this opens up our browser. Our browser is off screen. But there you can see it. Not doing much because we didn't do anything, but that is our uh, host application. So we have an HTML application now to go ahead and run our actual code in. Now next up, we actually need to go ahead and get the the actual Babylon JS reference. This is best, can, uh, you can get this at the Babylon website. So let's go on up here, since we're open on Babylon JS. Go to download, and you can do a release builder. So you can pick just the options you want. Uh, but I'll go back to, I think it's on their GitHub page, there's Content Delivery Network version. Now CDN is um, basically a really high uptime website that's hosting the files for you. And if you come in here, you can see from the GitHub site of github.com forward slash babylon.js forward slash babylon.js, uh, you can see the, the four different options available. Now, since we're in development, we actually want this guy right here, this uh, babylon.max.js. That means it hasn't been minified. The code is full and complete. Everything is in there. So you just want to take this script reference right here, and we go back to our editor. Now, 
and we simply want to add a script reference to it. So back in our head again, we will add a script, uh, source equals, and then paste what we just grabbed and close that off, close off our script and done. So this brings in Babylon.js. This is the magic sauce that actually makes Babylon.js work for us. And that's it. It's time to get down to some coding. Now the coding, I'm going to do all of this in line. Now you could split this off into separate JS files, makes things much cleaner, but I'm going to make it an individual HTML file. It makes it a little bit easier to follow along. So after our um, canvas tag here is created, we're just going to go ahead right underneath that and we do a script block, an inline script block. This is where all of our logic is going to be. So uh, first things first, var, we're getting a reference to our canvas, canvas equals so remember I told you earlier, the name was important. Ooh, wait, sorry, I'm getting, jumping the gun. Uh, we need to wire the script up so it's actually called. So window, this is standard JavaScript DOM programming. Add event listener. And the event we're listening to is DOM content loaded. So basically when the web browser is finished loading, call this function. And this is the function we're about to create and define. Uh, so, and that should actually have a semicolon there. All right, so now we get down to our actual coding. So first off, grab a reference to our canvas. Equals document dot get element by ID. And remember I told you earlier that canvas name was important. That's why we were using it right there. So this basically, uh, we'll now have a variable with a reference to our canvas from the HTML tag there. Next we need to create the Babylon.js engine itself. So new, and you'll notice this naming convention quite often. So Babylon, like so, and then engine. So you think of Babylon as a giant namespace container. And it takes the canvas and then a second parameter of true. I forget exactly what that actually stood for. I'll look it up later. Um, now, next up, we're gonna go ahead and create a scene. So var create scene equals function. So we're actually creating a function that will create our scene for us. So like so, and inside of our function, first we're gonna create a scene equals new, and then Babylon dot. Again, you'll notice this convention quite often. So create a new scene, and we pass in our engine, like so. Uh, a scene is a breakdown, like a level or a world or a screen, or that's essentially what a scene is in Babylon.js. And I'm going to set our scene back on clear color. That way we can see where it's, like clearly where it's notated. This is the color that's going to be used each time it's redrawn. Equals, and then you'll notice something, Babylon dot, oops, Babylon dot color three dot white. Like so. So every time the screen refreshes, it will draw the background in white first. And first things first, in our scene, we are going to need a viewport, an eye in it. And so that we're going to create a camera. Now a camera is something I'm gonna cover in a little bit more detail down the road. So for the specifics of a camera, stay tuned. I'm gonna go into this in more detail in its own section. So just for now, know that this is your vantage point in the world. You need to have at least one to render the results. And this is basically your eye in the 3D world. We're creating something called a free camera. And I'll get into the differences of cameras later once again. So, and you'll notice the same convention. Free camera, I will call you camera one, and then I need to give it a location. So for that case, it's a new Babylon dot uh, vector three. So it's just a location in 3D space, X, Y, or zero, zero, so right at the origin, and we'll move it back from the origin. So we're gonna place our item at the origin. We just wanna be back 10 units from that space so we can actually see what we're about to draw. And then this guy and everything you ever create is going to have to have the scene it's to be created in passed in as well. So there we go, done. So we created our camera in our scene. Uh, camera dot, oops, oh, ah, what are you doing? All right, did I screw something up because I'm not getting the code completion I want. Camera, new vector, end of scene. No, I didn't. I think I just made IntelliSense go stupid or smart indentation, indentation go stupid. All right, so now we've positioned the camera 10 units off of the origin. Now we wanna tell it to go and look back at the origin. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is this is actually superfluous. Uh, I believe by default, the target of the camera is 000. I'm doing this just to be thorough. Uh, and then we'll use a built-in already created object for us. So you notice no new, 
Uh, so vector 3.0. And this is simply a vector 3 with the values of 0, 0, and 0. You use 0, 0, 0 a lot, so they've pre-created one for you. And this is just getting a reference for it. Now, the nice thing here is since you're not newing it, this is already an existing variable. So there's no overhead, there's no creation, there's no nothing here. It's already been made for you. And it would have been made back here when you created the Babylon engine. All right, so that we had created the camera, moved it 10 back, set its target back to the origin. Now let's actually create something at that origin. We're gonna create a box. So babylon.mesh.create box. Call it box. Make it four point, uh, so it's four by four by four size cube. And again, you tell it where to create it. So we wanna create this box in our scene. And then finally, at the end of our function, we turn our newly created scene. And we're good. So that is our create scene function. Now that we've got that, we are pretty much done. So the last thing we wanna do is actually, we'll create our scene like so. Now keep in mind, this create scene function could have just been done completely in line and you could get rid of this if you want. And I'm trying to be a little bit more clean and proper and expandable for going down the road, especially if you want to modularize this code a little bit later. So you could, you know, not have it all in one giant index function. But if you're wondering, well, why did you do this as a function and immediately call the function just for proper coding? Uh, you know, you could have literally just done all of this code in line, drop the return, and then continued on from there if you wished. Uh, so we've created our scene, like so. So now that we have an instance of our scene, it's time for our game loop. Now remember way up here, we created the engine for our, uh, our, our Babylon engine. Well, now what we're gonna do is basically run the main game loop. And that is simply a matter of calling engine dot, and then it's run render loop. And render loop is going to basically be called every frame. So uh, as fast as it can be drawn, I think uh, Babylon JS by default is capped at 60 frames per second. So 60 times per second, as long as your computer will keep up, this run render loop will be called. So inside of this, you can do all of your game processing, etc. Essentially, this is your main game loop. And function, it takes a function as a parameter. So this is what you actually want it to go ahead and do. Uh, I'm gonna screw that up. All right, so brace bracket, brace bracket there and done. Hmm, no, I'm screwing this up. All right, uh, function, end function, end def, done. Okay, and so inside of this function, this is the function that's gonna be called every single loops to draw our, our world. We just wanna go ahead and call scene, Dot render. Now remember the scene is you know your level. It has all of the pieces we just created in it, but it knows how to deal with all these things. It knows how to use the camera. It knows there's a box in it, etc. So all of this running together should work just perfectly, assuming no typos, which is a big assumption. We shall go ahead and save that, flip back to our web browser. We're here and reload. And there you go. What we have here is a cube in three-dimensional space. Ta-da! Now it's hard to tell that we don't just have a box in three-dimensional space, but that's because we're looking at it straight on. So we'll go back here to our free camera like so, and um, along the y-axis, we can move it up by two units, for example. We'll flip on back here, and there you see we kind of shift it up. Here, actually, make, let's make that six units. There, so you can see it is actually in 3D. Now, what our scene is lacking is texture maps, lighting, um, and interesting things to do. And don't worry, those are all coming in future tutorials, but that is it for this one. And apparently when I say 10 minutes, I mean 14. But we are done, that is it. That is the basics of setting up Babylon JS and getting it going. Um, it doesn't look like a lot, but we've actually accomplished quite a bit here. We've got a main loop up and running, we've got our game initialized, we've got things in our scene, and they're rendering via a camera. And that is the heart of every Babylon JS application. Now if you stay tuned, we're going to get in, as I said, we're gonna cover that camera a little bit more. We're gonna get into lighting it, then we're gonna get into texturing it. And then from there, we'll cover, you know, importing 3D models, levels, navigation, etc. So uh, we got the basics down. We have our first world created. We got the gist of how things work. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click like. And if you want to keep hearing more about this series, uh, do click subscribe. I uh, do appreciate it. I will see you all later. Hope you found that useful. Goodbye.